Ah, doesn't that feel good? <laughs> what a wonderful morning. And uh, again, we're just so thrilled that you're here joining us either live or on our live stream. On this busy, busy Mother's Day weekend, we're going to wrap up our little series R&R &R, about how to refuel and refocus. I got a simple message for you today. But again, first of all, we want to celebrate all the moms here. So again, we can't applaud them too much. Let's applaud all the moms. It has just been such a great day. And I also, in part of celebrating you and, and honor you, honoring all of you, I would like to pray for you as well on behalf of the rest of the church. So would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for motherhood and all it represents. Enduring, self-giving love, patience, kindness, nourishment for our bodies, our hearts, our souls. All of these things and more reflect your love for us. Even as our Lord Jesus said, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, so you long to gather your children to yourself. So God, bless all our moms today and bless and comfort all who long to see babies or the children that they've lost as well as those whose longing for children has not been realized. Lord, you know the hearts of each and every one of these women, and so we ask for your blessing upon each of them today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, now for just a few moments, I want to talk about renewing your wonder. Your wonder. And here's why this matters so much. Because your life can consist of an endless stream of appointments. You go from one event to the next, and the next, and the next, and the next, and the next, until you die. Or, along the way, you capture moments. You notice everyday miracles. And you find yourself thinking, wow, even in hard times, there's still goodness and grace and beauty and joy. What makes the difference between these two realities? A sense of wonder. It's, it's actually pretty simple. But... All too often, our sense of wonder gets snatched away by so many other things. I mean, for example, how about just getting to church today? Right, moms? Because we all know that part of Mother's Day weekend means that mom wants everyone to cheerfully come to church with her. To, you know, get enthusiastic, be on our best behavior until we're not. In fact, it reminds me uh, of the, my, my sister Barbara. I have two sisters, older brother. My sister Barbara uh, unearthed this old picture of the, th the three of us. That's how many we had so far. <laughs> this is from the late 1960s, okay? I, I don't know if this is Mother's Day or Easter. At Easter, we even had to dress up even more, which we loved even less, but... Um, uh, just for by way of introduction, uh, this over here, this this brave lad over here, this is a fellow Twin Lakes pastor and our older brother Paul Spurlock right here. He would want you to believe that the sun is in his eyes, but in fact he's crying like a baby right here. <laughs> I want to go to church. This is Barbara. She's having a lovely time as well. Um, <laughs> younger sister Jenny hadn't been born yet. Uh, I, I, I'd like to think I'm relatively composed next to the, next, the uh, you know, what do you think? By <laughs> some 50 years between then and here. <laughs> uh, back here, this is my dad. <laughs> I notice he's left the door open. He's not quite sure whether or not he's on board with this. He wants to be able to go right back into the house and uh, has a real excited look on his face. And... Where's mom? 
She's taking the picture, of course, because she's the only one who cares to take the picture. It was all part of, you know, her Sunday morning dream until, of course, it blew up in her face. <laughs> Any of you moms relate to that? <laughs> we can all relate to this because it happens whenever we think, you know, hey, maybe I'm on the cusp of a moment. And then instead you're left with tears and snotty noses or some other type of little disaster. And then you lose sight and awareness of the wonder of life and the wonder of every single day. Or maybe you're at a point in your life where you, if you're honest, you just simply feel bored. Because it's kind of the same old, same old day after day. And you wonder, will I ever have that that sense of awe, like maybe I had way back when, when things were different. Because listen, having a sense of wonder is the difference between simply breathing and being alive. It's the difference between enduring life and enjoying life. The difference between, you know, decent, marriage or a lifelong love affair with your spouse and I get it you know you might go wonder that's kind of a soft subject I mean that's like is Oprah going to talk about wonder too <laughs> but check out what Job says about this in chapter 5 verse uh, 9 it says he performs wonders God performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. You see, the problem is not a lack of wonders. The issue is whether or not we will actually notice them, and so often we don't. And if you read the Gospels, you'll notice that the disciples have the very same problem. Things can be playing out miraculously all around them, and they're like, whoa, what's going on? In fact, amazingly, with the biggest wonder ever, the resurrection of Jesus, they're like, completely clueless and if that's possible for them if you can miss that man you can miss anything which means it would be wise for all of us to be asking ourselves what are the wonders around me that I'm not saying I want to take you to an amazing story Luke 24 you have to see this for yourself this is the story of the resurrection and I just want to say up front or kind of the story around the story, if you will. I want to say up front, the main point of Luke 24 is that Christ is risen. But it raises the question, how does that impact the lives and the awareness of those around him, those closest to him? I find it fascinating how the disciples, it just, they're just kind of lost in the fog. Again, like so many of us. Well, Again, you may know this story. Jesus has told his disciples multiple times that he is going to be crucified, but then he will rise again on the third day. Very specific information. But on that third day, after he dies on the cross, Mary Magdalene and some of the other women, they go to the tomb completely expecting the body to be where? in the tomb and so when the rock is rolled away and the body's gone they kind of freak out somebody's stolen the body or there's some terrible tragedy that they're they're that's facing them and look what happens at verse four it says while they were wondering about this suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them wow the word wondering here in the original, it means to be perplexed at a loss, anxious because you're like, what in the world is going on? And you've been there, right? You've been there perhaps because something with your health or your finances, your family, your job, something goes sideways in your life and you're like, oh, I wonder what I am going to do next. Well, that kind of wonder, 
is not really the kind that we're going for today, but that's exactly where Mary and the women find themselves in that moment. And it may be where you find yourself right now with something very specific. Well, eventually, the, the women, they go back to where the, the 12 disciples are hiding behind a locked door, and they announce to them that the body is missing. And they're like, what are you talking about? And they're, well, well, first of all, thing one, yes, the body is gone. The, the rocks rolled away. But thing two, there were two guys that kind of explained what was going on to us. And oh, by the way, they were like glowing. Glowing, yeah, glowing, like really, really bright. And on the basis of what they told us, we think that Jesus is alive. Do the disciples say, wow, that is such wondrous news? <laughs> nope. It says that they regarded the words of the women as foolishness. That is nonsense. That is crazy. They are, they're kind of patronizing the, the women who bring this, this report to them. Except for one. One guy among the 12 whom often gets kind of poked fun at by people like me, other pastors. But in this case, Peter is the hero. Because it says at verse 12, they're all like scoffing at this information. Peter, however, went away wondering to himself what had happened. Now, this is after he has run to the tomb. We know from, if you were here with the Easter, John, who... who writes his own account, wants to remind us that he beat him there. But after they see the grave clothes and where Jesus had been laid, he walks away wondering to himself, what happened? Luke uses a different word here in the original when he says wondering. It doesn't mean to be perplexed at a, or at a loss. It means to be amazed astounded, uh, to marvel over something. It suggests that in this moment, Peter is trying to put together the pieces of the puzzle. And he doesn't have them all assembled, but he has a sense that God is on the move, that, that God is up to something. Now, let me ask you something. When was the last time you felt that kind of wonder. When, we ask you, when was the last time I felt I was filled with wonder over, you know, I don't have all the information, but I just have a sense God is in this. Or you, you, you know, you're out and about and, and something, you know, you see something in creation or you see something in, in, in uh, the face of a child or whatever it might be and it fills you with wonder. I mean, God gave us a head start this morning when he saw all those beautiful, precious babies. And it's like, wow, it's just amazing. Now, again, this is not our tendency. Our tendency, if we're not careful, and some more than others, is to just view life as if the glass is always half empty, right? Well, yeah, yeah well. Things are good, but let's talk about the things that are bad, right? And if we're not careful, we kind of become a Debbie Downer, you might say. And if not you, let's just say it's not you, but you know a Debbie Downer. Maybe there's one in your life. And you, when you see this person, you know, you say hello, you are polite, but you have learned to, to, to avoid this question, hey, how are you doing? right? Because you know what's going to follow. Oh, not good. Another terrible day. And so you just tiptoe around that because you don't want to get on the bummer train with them, do you? You love them in the Lord. But you're not going to ask them how they're doing. No, I learned better. Now, what is the problem if we get stuck in that kind of attitude? No wonder right? Do you want to live your life like that? Do you? I surely don't. And so I want to just point out three very simple things that we can all apply that will help renew 
our sense of wonder today. And the first one is this. Remember God's wonders. Remember them. Like I said, Jesus announced his death and resurrection on multiple occasions. But after the crucifixion, they're like, oh my goodness, what a total bust. We gave three years of our life and this is how it ends. This is terrible. But let's go back to the tomb. Verses 6 through 8. This is the, the gleaming guys. One of them says to Mary and the others, what? Remember how he told you while he was with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. He said this multiple times. Then they remembered his words. Oh yeah, there was that little thing about him rising from the tomb. I mean, let me ask you. What do you need to remember today? What do you need to remember? What it was like to hold your wife for the first time? Or your husband? Maybe it was the birth of a child, your own or somebody else's, dear to you, and you're just filled with awe. I remember Barbara, you saw in the picture, she was the first one of us to have a baby, and when uh, my niece Mallory was born, I, I was just like, I'm an uncle. Wow. My sister had a baby. <laughs> it's incredible. And yet, you know, we lose sight of those things. How about when you got baptized, if you have? And you came up from the water and it just felt like oh, God's grace has just saturated me. And you're in awe of that. Or a time when you went through a very difficult situation. It was like you were just stuck in a tunnel day after day of darkness. And then finally God brought you through to the other side. And you were reminded in that moment that God is faithful and filled you with a sense of wonder over his goodness and his grace. Or just... This is not hard for us to do. The last time you just took a moment to drink in the beauty of God's creation. And it's like, oh, God, you are amazing. Psalm 77, 11 says this. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. You may know way back when the Israelites were crossing into the promised land, they had to cross over the river Jordan, which was flowing at flood stage. It was impassable. God says, I'm going to stop the flow of the water, which he does. In fact, it dries up. And then he says to Joshua, who then passes it along to the priest, he says, when you cross over on the dry riverbed, I want you to pick up, have the, the priest pick up 12 stones and make a monument on the other side. Why did God tell them to do that? Well, he explains himself. He said, the day is going to come when among your descendants, their children will ask them, hey, what are those stones doing there? Because they will have forgotten the story. And in that moment, you are going to tell them that you crossed the Jordan on dry land. In fact, you crossed the Red Sea on dry land. And you are to remember this. And this is for the whole world that they would know that the hand of the Lord is strong. And that the Lord is to be feared. In other words, he is worthy of our worship and our wonder. And... You know, you don't have to be, you know, part of the group that crossed the Red Sea or the River Jordan to do this. You can do it in very simple ways. In fact, about 15, 16 years ago, we had a family retreat up at, at Camp Hammer. And I don't know, there's another little micro baby boom going on. <laughs> a bunch of younger couples with their kids. Our kids were very young at the time. And I was sharing along these similar lines. And so after sharing uh, a message with the same themes, we gave each of the couples a little rock with the word wonder engraved in it. In fact, this is the rock I'm holding in my hand. Here's a picture of it on screen. That This has lived on our kitchen windowsill ever since. 
so that I see it all the time I'm doing the dishes. No, I, I'm, I, uh, I do see it often, and I'm reminded of the words that, you know, I was sharing back then. In fact, I'm reminded yesterday when I was holding this and, and looking at it, it just took me right back to that weekend, it took me back to that special time at that special place at Camp Hammer. And, uh, and of course, I fast-forwarded in my mind to August 2020 when the CZU fire ripped through the camp and destroyed pretty much all of it. And I wondered if maybe God has a second act for camp. He knows. He'll let us know in his good time. But I know this. I was reminded that the hand of the Lord is still strong and that the Lord can do whatever he pleases. And not only that, but that the Lord has chapters yet to unfold, not perhaps just only in the ministry there, but in our own lives. You have chapters yet to unfold because the strong hand of the Lord will make it so. He will do what he intends to do in our lives. Do you believe that? Well, that should fill us all with a sense of, of just wonder and anticipation. And however you remember it, whether it's a simple thing like a, a rock or a journal or art or a photo, remember God's wonders. It'll make such a difference. Second thing that we can all apply is to request vision for God's wonders. Because you can't remember what you never saw or <laughs> noticed, right? So this is kind of a linchpin here. I experienced this in a, fre a fresh way. Last Sunday, I drove down to San Diego to prepare for a week-long mission trip with our Twin Lakes Christian School 7th graders. And I went down the day ahead. They were going to fly down Monday morning because my kind of pre-mission mission was to haul down in my truck 30 gallons of paint, rollers, drop cloths, all sorts of different supplies, sports equipment, you name it, trucks loaded, I drive down there, spend the night hotel. Next morning, I wake up, and while the kids and with my wife, Laura, 25 very hyper seventh graders and some adults, a group almost 40 in total, they're getting ready to board a plane in San Jose, fly down to San Diego to meet me. In the meantime, I'm trying to get more paint because apparently there's a paint shortage in the state of California. So I'm hitting up the Home Depots and the like in, in San Diego, and it's taking longer than... I anticipated, and then I've got to go to the airport before they land, find a rental van that's parked in the short-term parking, take all the stuff in my truck, put it in the van, find a place to park my truck for the rest of the week before they touch down, because then i got to get to the curbside, pick up the drivers, go get more vans, come back and get the kids, while my wife and the others are trying to control 25 really hyper 7th graders. Got the picture? Laura says, don't be late. Drive up to the short-term uh, parking lot. There is a gate across it and signs that say, lot full. Okay, we're off to a good start. There's a guy sitting there, nice guy, and I say, hey, I need to get in there and take all the stuff in my truck, put it in a van, and, uh, and then find a place to park. And maybe, is, could I, is it cheaper parking long-term, right? And he goes, huh, there is no long-term. Do you see all the construction? That's long-term parking. This is your option. Good luck. Oh, yeah, by the way, lot's full. Okay. Uh-huh, but I think to myself, I'll just switch places with the van, right? Problem solved. So I drive in, find the van. In front of the van is a sign that says 60-minute parking violators will be towed. I need five days, not 60 minutes. So, I, okay, one thing at a time. See, maybe there's a parking space. I go down. First lane I go down, drive down, and all of a sudden, oh, an open stall. And I pull in, I'm like, this is awesome, got a place to keep the truck, go over, get the van. I'm thinking, I'm just going to park the van behind the truck, and hopefully it won't get honked at, and I'm just going to load everything into my truck, drive up into the same lane where my truck is parked, and wouldn't you know, right across from it, oh, a second lane. I mean, this place was jammed, there's a second stall for me to park. I'll show you, this was so cool. By now I'm laughing, okay? <laughs> there's the van starting to load the, the supplies. There's a truck. How convenient is that? Truck, 
and take stuff over right back to the van. Now, the reason I'm laughing out loud here because is because earlier that morning, as I was praying, I was saying, Lord, help me to live this sermon. You know, help me to see the little miracles that are happening around me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't get ahead of me. Because we all do this, right? Especially it's a task, task, task. Got to hurry up. You know, the plane's coming. Laura's texting me. We've landed. And, and yet I'm laughing because, oh, here you go, God. And if you know me, you know I am not the kind of person who prays for a parking space in front of the store or anything like that. I have to confess. Sometimes I look down on that because I think God has other things to do. Than... <laughs> but in this moment... God's like saying, Mark, I can do whatever I care to do. I'll give you one spot. No, I'll give you two just so you can learn not to look down on people who pray for parking spots. There you go. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Now I need to catch up. It all went great. We were having an awesome time. And let me ask you. Is it possible? Is it just possible that there's something, someone in your life where either the, the thing, the interaction, they become so routine, you don't pray about it. Well, you know, I pray about the big things. Leaf things. You could even say we live our lives in kind of a secular realm. When we think that we don't need God in, uh, as a part of every single thing we do. Right? You, you track it with me? I'll call on you for the big things. But if I got it, you know, I got it, God. You, know, you go do whatever else you need to do. Who wants to live like that? Not me. And so God had to kind of, you know, give me a gentle reminder who's in control around here. So request God's vision for his wonders. Let's go back to our story because watch how Jesus, you think Jesus had fun with me down in that parking lot. Watch what he does here in this passage later in Luke 24. Two other disciples, followers are talking about, news has spread, the tomb is empty, they're discussing this. And it says, while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing them. Okay, so get the picture. He just sidles up next to them. They're like, I don't know who this guy is, but... We're not going to tell him to go away. One, and he said to them, what are these words that you're exchanging with one another as you're walking? And they stood still looking sad. One of them named Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? You need to circle and under, underline this first because here a guy named Cleopas, if you've ever felt kind of like, you know, you said the wrong thing, you need to go back to this guy right here. Because Cleopas tells Jesus Christ to get a clue. <laughs> Dude, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I love that. Well, it turns out that this stranger seems to know a lot about the Bible. In fact, he seems to know how it all connects to what's happening on that weekend with the empty tomb and the crucifixion and all this kind of stuff. So they're like, hey, why don't you come and have dinner with us at our house? And so they sit down to have a meal. And that's when Jesus takes the bread and he blesses it and he breaks it and he distributes it, distributes it to these people. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, it was an eye-opener for them, too. It says that when he did this. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they're like, ah, missed it by that much. In fact, they said to, another, to one another, weren't our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us, and we were so close, but our eyes had to be opened all over again to the wonder of Jesus in their midst. Now again, is it just possible? No, it's not just possible. We actually believe that Jesus is here right now 
in his spirit. He is in our midst. He is working in our lives. He is walking with us in the road of life. Do we see him in those moments? And if not, ask him to help you see. It's as simple as that. Because life is so much richer when we remember God's wonders, when we request vision for his wonders, and finally, it gives gives us an opportunity to celebrate his wonders. Look at what the disciples do. Once they understand that they are part of the greatest wonder of all, the resurrection of the Messiah, it says at Luke 24, 50, when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they stayed continually at the temple praising God. Now you have to imagine Jesus has now left them. They're praising God, but their circumstances are still pretty tenuous. I mean, they, their master had been crucified. The Romans weren't there at the temple praising God. The chief priests weren't at the temple praising God. The very people who killed their Lord, well, who's next? They are. They've got the target on their back. And, so, and yet they have this attitude. You know, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but Jesus is alive. We don't know what's around the next bend. It might be scary. It might be painful, but Jesus is alive. And so they celebrate the reality. It just changes their perspective on all of life. You've heard the saying that life is like a roller coaster, right? It's got the ups and it's got the downs. Well, I think we would all agree that's true. And so the question is, are you you riding the ride of life like this? (laughs) Celebrating the twists and turns and the adventure? Or are you riding it like this? (laughs) it's the same ride the only difference is whether you're full of wonder or abject fear what can you celebrate today church well being alive celebrate Pretty safe to say, you know, if you're here, you have a mom. She may be with you. She may be with the Lord. It may be complicated, but celebrate the good. Guys, sons, daughters, celebrate your mom. Take advantage of an opportunity to celebrate the wonder, the gift that you've been given. And that's just one thing. You know, the list just goes on and on and on and on if we remember and ask God to open our eyes we will have opportunities to celebrate over and over and over again as Psalm 107 says let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind so may your sense of wonder just swell up within you because his wonders are all around us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for the opportunity to celebrate our moms. Thank you for the opportunity to worship, the opportunity, Lord, to hear from your word. And Lord, I, I pray that uh, we, we all know that, that life is difficult. We don't want to minimize that. We acknowledge that. But Lord, I pray that you would inform our minds and you would widen our perspective in such a way that in the midst of chaotic events, in the midst of, of sadness and loss and wondering what's next, you'd fill us with a sense of, Ah, holy wonder 
that says, nevertheless, Jesus is alive. He is working in my life. He is working in this world. His kingdom will come in fullness. His will be done perfectly and fully. And so I want to live my life as a member of his unshakable kingdom with a sense of expectation and anticipation and awe of the wonderful deeds that are all around us and that he does out of his goodness and love. Thank you, God. We praise you this day. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. All God's people said, amen. Amen.